Hi. Is this camera straight? Look at this. It's so fuzzy. I love it so much. It's like having my own rabbit. Okay, what am I doing today? First of all, my hair is up in a ponytail. Sorry, this is so close to me. It's like a little too close, but um, I'm just having trouble with my lighting setup here. And every time I move it, everything starts falling. So just, okay. But today I'm going to do um, a list of the best estate sale and antique store finds that I have found in the perfume category, which is the only category that I buy things from, from estate sales. So I've spent a good amount of time sailing around estate sales, going estate sailing, if you will, um, and going to antique stores, though I find it, estate sales are generally more profitable. So we're gonna move towards the best finds as we go. So we're gonna start with like, these are good, but like, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you where I got them if I remember and about how much I paid if I remember, which for most of them, I don't. First of all, let me give you a couple mediocre tips for buying things from estate sales. First of all, always go early. I hate this tip because I am not an early bird. I never get the worm and the worm is often really nice perfumes. So if you're like me, this is of limited use because I'm not gonna end up being there early. I'm not gonna end up being one of the first people. But second tip is if you go on a site like estatesales.net, you can find estate sales listed near you when they're going to be you know, open. And often they'll have photos of the things that they're selling there. So you know, you would think that the good thing to do would be to find ones that have pictures of perfume and go to those. Probably is the best thing to do if you can get there early. However, what I do is actually, I look at the ones that don't have photos of perfume, but have photos of, you know, generally sort of feminine items. And often there will be some perfumes there as well that whoever's taking the pictures just didn't take photos of. And that way you, there's going to be less competition. So you don't have to get there as early. Third tip that is mediocrely useful is live in an area where there's good estate sales. I used to live in the Los Angeles area and they have amazing estate sales. Uh, my sister lives near Beverly Hills, not in Beverly Hills, but we end up going to a lot of estate sales in Beverly Hills. Unsurprisingly, they have amazing estate sales. I live in Northern San Diego County now, and you know, you'd think there would be good estate sales here. It's near Orange County. It's close to San Diego also, but it's just sort of an area that is a dead zone for estate sales that I've found so far. So those are my limited tips. So let's start with this one. I got this one at a local estate sale place here, and this is a place that resells things from estate sales. And this is Cartier So Pretty. This is a really nice powdery, floral, uh, woody scent. It's a little aldehydic. It has, um, it has an old fashioned edge to it, somewhat reminiscent of like a, a Chanel number no. five. Um, it's really pretty. I am currently actually selling this though because it's not it's not something I really need in my life right now. I don't remember how much it was. Um, it is missing its top though. But on the whole, this was a great find. So the next one, I got this at a, at a I got this at an estate sale in LA, and this is Estee Lauder Youth Do. Now, as you're probably aware, this is a pretty affordable perfume, so it's not in and of itself like an amazing find, but it was only $5, so that's why it was a good find for me. I really like Youth Do. You know, it is a bit dated, but it's a really, um, a really nice alternative to other more pricey, like woody balsamic scents. And it is like very close to things like opium, which I love. So Youth Do, especially if you can find it at a good price, is actually a really nice scent in that uh, in that category. Again, it is old fashioned. I think it's old fashioned in the same way that like old fashioned names are coming back into fashion. Names like Esther or Norma, you know, 
these names that are names of, for my generation, are like grandmothers or great grandmothers are starting to circle back around. So scents like this are also kind of starting to circle back around. Or maybe that's just for me that I find them kind of more appealing. They don't smell old fashioned in a bad way. They smell old fashioned in a, a way that's sentimental and nostalgic, even though I didn't live when this was out and I don't know anybody who smelled like this. It puts you in a mindset of a, a time period that by now has romantic associations with it, as opposed to just uh, passe and old fashioned associations with it. Okay, the next two, one of these I got at an antique store and one I got at an estate sale reseller. And I'm putting these together because they might be the same scent or they may be just very similar. Um, somebody who knows more about this can maybe give me information. For the one that I found at an antique store, this is Chanel number no. five, the Eau de Cologne. Love it. For me, I love number five, the EDC. I like it more than the um, EDP by far, and I like it also more than the ED, the modern EDT. I find the modern EDP like a bit screechy, and I find the EDC like more powdery and light and woody and just less overall sharp and more smooth. Mm. The other one that I have here is this. Uh, this is you can see here, it's yay, Chanel number no. five spray cologne, and it's in this refillable container. I'll take it apart. I guess this probably pulls out. I'm a little scared to break it. It's it's labeled spray cologne, but I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means it's the Eau de Cologne formulation. I don't know if that means it's um, like an EDT formulation or what. But to me, it does smell very similar. I think it's a bit sharper. I do really like it, but in some ways, I, it also could be just because it's a different age, or it could be a whole different formulation that's not even, that I'm not even aware of, but it does smell a little bit closer to the EDP, although not all the way there. So if anybody does know what spray cologne means in this context, uh, that would be really helpful. I do know that this is from 1958 to 1975, somewhere in that range. And even though it is a little sharper than the Eau de Cologne I have, it's still heavier and deeper and smoother than the EDP, the modern EDP, to, in my opinion. And I do like it better. But this Eau de Cologne, maybe this is like an old bottle and it's mostly just the base notes that's left here but it's just pure like vanillic, woody, sandalwood potion of um, delectable joy. Okay, so next up I have L'Artisan Parfumer Vanilla, just a mini. This I got from a, an estate sale reseller and it was in a big pack of like 25 to 40 minis and samples that were all together like $5. It was insane. This is amazing. I didn't love it so much at first, but it's really grown on me. It smells like maple syrup on pancakes, kind of. It, it doesn't smell like maple, but it reminds me of the smell of when you put maple syrup on pancakes and it's sort of soaked into the pancakes and made it into like sugary pancake mush. That's what this smells like. It's a woody vanilla with ylang ylang. I don't usually like ylang ylang, but it just adds this syrupiness to this that I find really gorgeous. So I don't know if this is the same as the current version because I haven't seen any kind of bottle that looks like this. But regardless, I'm glad that I have this and it was a great deal. The next one I wanna talk about also from an estate sale reseller, Cartier Delice, a little mini, clearly kind of old. Now this is discontinued, but it is a really, really lovely cherry scent. And at some point I want to do a cherry video, so I'll talk more about it there, but I love this scent. I think like most people, I find cherry scents to be difficult, um, or at least they aren't always appealing because they can have that medicinal element. To me, and I know this isn't everybody's opinion, but to me this doesn't smell medicinal. It just smells, um, it's more moving towards candy cherry rather than cough syrup cherry, like more like a Jolly Rancher. <laughs> but it isn't overwhelmingly in the candy direction. I, 
it might be different if you had enough to like spray it, but the amount that I get from the dabber is just like this delicate, almost floral brush of cherry. I think that the violet that's in there lightens it up a bit, makes it powdery and fluffy so that it's not too much. But again, if you had a full sprayer, I don't know how the experience would differ. I don't want to use too much of it. The bottle's so pretty too. And I don't remember how much this was. It was a bit more than uh, the minis usually are at places like that, but it wasn't much. It probably was like 20 or something. Okay, we're moving up in the world. Next, oh, I didn't bring it. Oh. Next is Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique Parfum. The Parfum Concentration of Classique, which I have in two EDP formulations and the EDT formulation. Now I also have it in the Parfum formulation. And this is really magical. It isn't my favorite. I honestly do think I prefer the EDP and the EDT, but it's really nice. It has the same DNA, but it's missing some of the powdery fluffy notes that the EDT has. And it's even deeper and boozier than the EDP. It's also clearly an old bottle. It has a lot of wear and tear. So I don't know what this would have smelled like when it was new, if it would have had more legible top notes. But what is remaining is like classic distilled into a boozy, solid, heavy, heady, concentrated form. And this doesn't have an atomizer, so I've never, never worn a lot of it, you know? So I don't really know how it performs relative to something that does have an atomizer, but my guess is it stays probably pretty close to the skin, but it's really nice. And I, I think it would work well also in combination with like the EDP. If you're wearing a couple uh, chosen spots where you have some of this and then spray the EDP elsewhere, that would be nice. Now, I don't know if this is discontinued. I think it is. Kind of hard to find information about it, but it's really nice. It's really magical. Uh, the next one I have talked about before in a previous video, which I'll link here. This is Velvet Rose by Dolce & Gabbana. This I got from a antique store. And this was a bit more. Uh, usually antique stores charge more than the estate sales do. So I think this was like 60. And it's mostly full, but there's some at the top missing. And this is a really nice, fresh rose. It smells like a rosebud wrapped in velvet. It's light and powdery, floral. It's really nice. The next one, we're getting even more exciting. I don't anymore have. <laughs> I don't have it anymore because I gave it to my sister. I may have a picture. If not, then I won't put a picture up. But I bought it alongside a few minis, and I do still have the minis. So this is the original Lolita Lempica, I believe. From my research on the bottle and the formulation and the batch codes, I think this is the 97 to 2009 version, and it's from 2002 or 2003. Now I bought this al along with some minis. One of the minis has a batch code as well, and it also indicated it was also from 2003. So this is the mini of the original one. I don't know if this is the same because they weren't like in a package together. They were just at the same place, but it smells similar. And then this is a mini of the EDT. I also at the same time got this mini of the um, male scent, um, Lolita Lempica Al Masculine. And this, um, I also talked about it in a previous video. Now, this is the only version of Lolita Lempica that I've tried. I haven't tried the, the current one, so I can only speak about this one, but it's a smooth, interesting, light licorice scent with cherry opening. It's fluffy and spicy. It's like a gentle puff of licorice and anise with cherry mixed in there. And it's like a seductive swirl of cherry. And it has a really beautiful vanillic dry down. This EDT is also really nice. I mean, it's really just a lighter version of the EDP. It, I do think I prefer the EDP. This The EDT is lacking some body, some spine, and even a little bit of the sweetness. So it makes it in that sense a little bit more masculine, or at least more unisex. It has this green, green spicy element. I think it's ivy. Yeah, it smells like fresh greens, like you've stepped outside on a spring day and um, are surrounded by plants. So it's a fresh, uh, herbally, 
lighter version of the EDP. Next exciting scent. This is one that I also got two bottles at the same time and I only have one of them with me right now. One of them was this one, Poison Esprit de Parfum. And the other one, the other one was a vintage Poison Eau de Cologne, which if I have a picture, I'll put it here. And again, I gave that to my sister who also collects perfume. Let's compare it with the modern Poison, which I've done before, but it's not at the tip of my brain. Oh God, Ugh. I don't know if this is controversial or not. Maybe this is not particularly controversial, but I don't like modern poison. It smells like poison. It smells chemical, synthetic, plasticky, rubbery, like gasoline kind of. But this, this is majestic. It's so divine. It's boozy, syrupy, honeyed, romantic, thick, warm, plummy. Did I already say syrupy? It's syrupy. It, it has that same weird DNA that the modern poison has that makes it so horrific, but it's like, it's like how coffee is delicious, even though it's bitter because it's balanced out by other things. This is not balanced out by other things. This is just that pure acrid element. Whereas this is everything in perfect balance. So you have the sweetness, but you also have this like bitter, acidic, I don't know what it is, but whatever it is that makes poison smell rancid. <laughs> I don't know why, but it, it smells like an old building to me, but it doesn't smell like wood. It just smells like a place where life has been lived. There's a sweetness, there's a vanillic element, there's an aged, uh, pleasant, fruity rot to it. It's a whiny wine-esque wine kind of scent. And yet it feels so much warmer and rounder than if you just smell wine. Like it's more like smelling port or something. Absolutely delicious. And unfortunately I don't remember what the Eau de Cologne smells like. I, I do think that it smelled similar to this and I think that's because they're both vintage. So they both have that vintage poison uh, DNA. Okay, next up got uh, something, Next one I also got in this sale. The next one I also got at an estate sale um, in LA. And it is Creed Fleur de Gardenia. This is the bottle. It's missing a top and it's missing an atomizer. My sister and I bought this together. And this is actually not the juice anymore. This is water. Because we bought we bought this and it was about that full. And we could not get it out. Uh, like it wasn't gonna spray, it wasn't gonna um, decant in any normal way. There may have been a way to do it as an, uh, you were an expert or something, but we weren't. So essentially we did manage to get this open enough that we could kind of squirt it into um, different a different bottle and then separate it that way. So I have half of it, this is it decanted into a separate bottle. We ended up getting a little bit of plastic in there, but you know, whatever. This is a beautiful green gardenia scent. It's not overly complex or interesting, but it is really lovely. And it's, it's feminine, but it has this like spicy greenness to it that gives it um, a little bit of an edge. So it isn't overly heavy on the florals or the sweetness. It's like a fanciful springtime white floral gardenia and lily of the valley. There's a cedar like woodiness in there too, which gives it a little bit of depth. Okay, we have made it to the top three finest treasures. And I'm not exactly sure the order to put these in because one of them I'm not sure about. And I'm realizing right now that I don't even have it with me. I'm going to start with that one because there is a possibility that it is not genuine. I don't know for sure. And I don't know how to find out. This is Huvina Le Parfum Ideal. And I will put a picture of it here, but I actually left it at my parents' house because I couldn't fly with it. I got this at an antique store in Snohomish, Washington. It is clearly old, but I haven't been able to verify for certain what year it is from. This perfume ha went through a number of different um, bottle types. And the closest one that I can find is from an old ad. The problem with 
the ones that I've mostly found online are that the seal, th that gold seal that it has on it, is smaller than any of the seals that I see in the, the ones that um, I can find examples of online. And the only one that I can find that looks like it has the same shape and also a seal of a similar size is from this old ad. The glass is also clearly a cut crystal top, but a um, pressed glass base. So the fact that it is a cut crystal top, I think is promising. So I think it's probably genuine, but I don't know for sure. And I don't know what it's supposed to smell like but it smells nice. Uh, the opening I find a little bit boring, but it has the most majestic, beautiful dry down. It's like sandalwood and rose, absolutely stunning. If this is as vintage as I hope it is, then I think this is a really nice find. Now this was more expensive because it was from an antique store. And again, I can't remember the price exactly, but I think something in the 60, $50 range. Anyway, even if it isn't genuine, it is a beautiful bottle and a beautiful scent. So I can't do something like sell it because I don't know if it's genuine, but I'm glad to keep it around. Top two, this is a stunner. This is Anik Guttal Gardenia Passion, but it's the version that's in a special edition Baccarat bottle. Now this originally, according to my research, came in this beautiful box with this red velvet lining and an um, attachable atomizer that was like, you could squeeze. And this, this is all that I have. So you can see it's, it's a numbered bottle, which is cool. Well, you may not be able to see, but it's numbered and it says Baccarat there inscribed in the crystal and a little kind of seal on the bottom. It's completely unused and I haven't used it either, but I have smelled it from the top and now, I don't know anything about how this dries down, but from what I can just smell from here, which is a lot, it is quite a deep, powerful, heady white floral scent. It smells like it would be absolutely divine, definitely on the heavier side, I think, than Creed Fleur de Gardenia. I don't know how it performs, but it smells absolutely rich and stunning. And this is such a beautiful, piece. And so I'm so happy to have this. I don't remember how much it was. When I bought it, I didn't know what it was. I was just like, oh, that's a pretty bottle. I wonder what scent that is. And they were like, we don't know. So I bought it and then did research. Okay, it's time for number one. Number one. This one is special. I found this at a local antique store and um, it was $100. I I knew immediately I needed to buy it, even though I don't have an extra hundred dollars to spend, but I did. And my friends, look at this. This is a vintage extray of Guerlain Le Bleu, which I can't say. It is in the Baccarat bottle. This bottle has seen better days. It's It was taped shut with like um, sticky packing tape. And so it's all sticky all over and I don't know what to do about that. But from every indication that I've found, this is actually a genuine vintage Guerlain Baccarat bottle. So this is maybe the 20s, 30s? I, I don't know exactly. Look at that, listen to that. It's so stunning and the scent. I'm trying not to really use it. I just like, if I wanna smell it, just dab it from the top here because it is powerful. Look at that. I already liked this scent in the, the EDP version, but this parfum is just absolutely magical. It is absolutely one of the most amazing scents that I own, especially in the middle notes. Um, the dry down is pretty comparable to me, <laughs> to my amateur nose, but those middle notes are absolutely sublime and the current EDP doesn't really compare. This is lacking, I think, the top notes. So you kind of get straight to it um, because this is so old and I don't know how well preserved it was, but you can see there's a lot in there. Um, but it has the, you know, the typical powdery violet DNA of the EDP. 
but it is so much warmer. It's less sharp. It's like a cloud of warmth and it makes it so sublime. Powdery, vanillic violet. And I can do a full video. I, I'm gonna do like a full Guerlain video of my favorite Guerlains or something in that range and I can talk about it more extensively then. But for now, it's just enough to say this is my number one most prized find from estate sales and antique stores and really from anything because nothing else that I bought from retail can compare. I wouldn't be able to afford this if I hadn't found it at that antique store. Too bad it's covered in this sticky stuff. <laughs> now I gotta put this back before I drop it or something. Finally, I have some honorable mention? Dishonorable mentions? This is a set of Chanel EDTs that I found. I think they are fake and I wish that this was not true. I brought a couple of them over. It's not worth bringing them all over there. They're not worth it. They're in these little bottles, pressed glass. They say the name of the scent here in like cursive and then on the inside is printed Eau de Toilette. There's no logo on the top and the base, there's nothing there either. And I talked to people on Reddit and they were like, oh, it could be that it was like a sample that was decanted, a set of samples, and then they hand wrote the name of the perfume there. But I really don't think that's handwritten. I mean, I've looked at it under a loop and everything. I think it's printed. And as far as I can tell, that's not a thing that was ever done printed in um, cursive. And the bottle quality is not very good. And every other Chanel that I have, even this like little EDC or a little sample that I have of one of the exclusives, they all have the Chanel logo on the top. I mean, these ones are both pressed glass. The bottom doesn't look like it's any better quality, but yeah, I just, I suspect that this set is not genuine. Look at how uneven the glass is at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. When it comes to the scent, I don't know because I've never smelled the real EDTs. Now I've smelled all these exclusives in the EDP formulations. I don't have them on hand to compare. The only one I do have on hand to compare is number 22. This one came with a little number 22. And then I have a little sample of number 22 exclusive, which is my favorite scent. And I will say that it does smell good and it smells reminiscent of it. It doesn't smell exactly the same, but would it smell exactly the same? I don't know. It's also old and used. And I will say there is something about all of these scents that smells incomplete or haphazard, but the mind is powerful. And if you told me that these were 100% genuine, suddenly they would smell amazing. So it may just be because I think that they're fake that they smell a little off. This one does smell really good, Coromandel. It smells um, spicy, gingerbready. It smells like Coromandel, but I don't know. It's probably not. They smell good, but I'm afraid to use them because if they're real, then I'm like using them and these are like precious. And if they're not real, then I'm probably poisoning myself with who knows what. So I just kind of smell them and I'm like, that's nice, but like also... I'm mad at it for being fake, probably. Anyway, that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I would also really appreciate it if you're interested. Look at this. Isn't this a beautiful Easter's egg? It's painted with blackberries. You know where you could see a video of somebody painting this and a couple other Easter eggs? My art channel. Ooh. And I would be just so tickled. Oh God. I would be so happy if you could check out the egg video or I have a ghost painting video um, because I would love to create more art videos. Otherwise, a like and or subscribe here would also be appreciated. Thank you for watching. I don't know how to end this video. Okay, bye.